Hey, we're here to talk about rare games in my collection and uh, just to show a couple of them that uh, you might be interested in seeing and talking about more of. And also, if they're not rare, they're at least hard to find. That's right. Well, well some of them. Which is the definition of rare. Here we go! So the first game I want to talk about is a Wii game. Now, you know, there's a sort of window of time to collect games where certain games aren't quite valuable yet, yeah. but then later on they become incredibly hard to find. Yep. I think that window for not valuable yet is really for, you know, the Wii, the PS3, the 360. So um, one game I wanted to highlight was this game, Fragile Dreams, Great choice. Um, which um, is an X seed game, and they specialize in Japanese um, anime influence style games. And this is sort of a survival horror type of a game that um, is really unique in sort of its presentation. You're in a world where um, you're alone, except for you initially see someone whom you perceive to be there. And so the game mainly arms you with a flashlight and you're kind of led out to discover sort of the mystery of what's going on. Which kind of reminds me of Shattered Memories, which is Silent Hill on the Wii also, but this game is definitely survival horror in the fact that they're not relying on jump yeah. scares or anything like that. You are very alone in the sense like, will I ever see somebody? Which this kind of game probably isn't gonna be for everybody. No. Because sometimes when you're looking forever, you're like, I'm over looking for people, but this wants to set that tone. Well, a lot of people wanted to, you know, there's two categories, right? There's rare and yep. then there's valuable. Got it. And so there's a lot of rare games that aren't valuable and there's a lot of valuable games that aren't rare. rare. This is one that right now in the Wii's life cycle mm -hmm. is worth about 50 bucks complete. Okay. And that's now. That's I can't now. imagine what this might be sort of sought after for by collectors later. Yeah, that's why we wanted to kind of show this one first, is right now at this moment, but if you're watching this and it's like 2021, you might be going like, this game is 400 bucks right now. Who yeah, knows? it's Little Samson's only a $20 game, but Fragile Dreams is $1,000. I remember passing up Little Samson for 50 bucks like four years ago. I passed it for 60, and I've regretted it ever since. Here we go! So let's talk about the Nintendo 64. Woohoo! Yeah, so I love this console. I have every game for the console, one of which is Turok Rage Wars. I loved playing this game back in the day. Did you ever play this one? I did. I love the Turok series. I actually did a video saying that I would love to see Turok as a movie, and I would also That'd love to cool. see Turok come back. This game, Rage Wars, is specifically a multiplayer only shooter. There's yep. not a story or anything like that, but there is a single player mode on mode. it. There's also a co op mode, which you cannot finish unless you have this one. Dun dun dun! This is the gray cart. Now the gray cart was something that, um, there was a glitch in the original cart where you couldn't complete the game in co-op. And so a claim as a way of remedying that, Got it. they made, uh, they updated it and then they created this game and you could send in uh, a proof of purchase and get this one in exchange. Wow, now my question to you is how much more valuable is the gray cart as opposed to the black cart? The black cart is worth about five bucks maybe. Okay. The gray one's worth about $150. And that's something to really take note of if you're a game collector. I remember back in the day we actually passed up on some stuff not knowing that color variants were a big deal at the time. And that's like when we first started so collecting. weird, right? It's a weird thing. Like this this one's not only color variant, it's a, the game is different. Yeah, well and, and something to note too when you're collecting is that sometimes variants of different colors won't mean more valuable. I know Wayne right. Gretzky on the NES has three different variants. And it's not really worth jack. That game is terrible too. It's no Blades of Steel, I'll no. say that. Or Base Wars. That's uh, baseball. Oh. Here we go! So I'm noticing a theme uh, here, which is that a lot of, there seems to be a formula for rare games. Okay. Usually if there's sort of uh, a, an anime style artwork or horror or both. Um, and so this one fits squarely in the horror category. <gasps> Rule of Rose? Ground. No, it's not Rule of Rose. I'm no, I, I don't own Rule of Rose, nor, <laughs> nor do I care to, but. Okay. Haunting Ground is a horror game, and you love this game. I why, do. Why don't you tell everybody about it? The Dark Tones is one of my favorite things in any game, but something I like in this video game in particular, now don't mark me on this, but I think the female's name is Fiona, but something that makes this interesting to me is a lot of survival horror games, you kind of depend on yourself. You're surviving. There's a horror element to it that keeps yep. you alone. But in this game, I won't give away any spoilers, but a crucial part to beating the game and finishing the game the right way is using your little dog with you. It's not the ghost dog from Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yippee, not, it's yo, not yippee, yay. That, is that a bow wow wow? Yeah. Hi, 
I don't know that type of music as much as I wish I did. A lot of survival horror uh, thrives on giving you as little resources as possible. And this is a game that uh, I believe there's almost no combat, or if any combat. Yeah. It's mainly about sort of being sneaky and stealthy and trying to figure out uh, what's going on. So um, definitely a cool game and uh, this one's complete. I got it at a, um, a trade event wow. and was thrilled to be able to trade for it. Yeah, and as far as a survival horror game on the PS2, just so you guys know, it's your run of the mill otherwise. Yes, there's some different elements yeah. with the dog, but if you look at it, look at it aesthetically from the outside, you're gonna be like, okay, looks like any other horror game out there on the PS2 days. And it's Capcom. And it's Capcom. Yeah, which... I think that's part of what, what's, what makes it interesting too for collectors. So. And you gotta love Capcom. Gotta love Capcom. I still love Capcom. Yeah, about 140 now I think at this point, maybe more for this game, I don't know. You all right? Breach and Clear is a strategy, uh, tactical, tactical uh, type game uh, where you breach and clear rooms. Interestingly enough, that game came, which might throw a lot of people off. It was originally mm -hmm. the old dirty mobile game. It was a mobile game. Yep. And it came to this. And I know a lot of people, me in particular, sometimes when I hear it was a mobile game at first, yep. I'm like, I don't know if it's going to be worth playing. But this and among other games, some mobile games that have been transported over or moved over to other consoles are yep. worth checking out. Totally. Just because it's a mobile game. Maybe the mobile platform is a great you know, place to play the yeah. game. You know, And it makes more sense on that sort of a format. But in this case, Mighty Rabbit, who made the game, they I think this was kind of their Hail Mary to stay in business, Oof. if I'm not mistaken. Uh, someone correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, what they did was they made this game and said, we've got the funds to make a limited pressing of it. They make the game, it sells out pretty quickly, and the first maybe I'd say six or eight months of it being out, this then becomes limited run games, wow. which now has tons of games tons that they've of put games. out. They now have a partnership with Best Buy. And everybody loves the company. Yes, mostly loves the company. Well, ever since the Best Buy thing, I've seen some people, oh, is it limited uh, run? Whatever, whatever, we don't get into that. We're, yeah. we're here to love right we now. We love the games. Yeah. But um, I will say this. Yes. This is where it all started. And so That's it's great. now like a $200 plus game. Are you serious? Yeah, and it's because it's limited run number one and it's on the Vita. And most Vita games that you find nowadays are just skyrocketing in yeah. price. So wow, well, good, good, good. I'm glad you have it in your collection. Uh, and I got this on Limited Run's website when it released. I didn't, I didn't buy it secondhand. So I paid, I think, twenty five dollars for my copy or whatever. Wow. It was, so I have a copy of Mario Duck Hunt open. Really? Yeah. With both games on it? Just Duck Hunt. With both games on it? Yeah, with just Sonic. With um. Here we go. Uh, Riff. Yes, sir. Vita. Vita. Let's keep, Let's keep the going. Vita train going. What you got? Choo choo. Choo choo. <laughs> uh, we talked about this in the room tour video, but this is the Persona 4 Solid Gold Edition uh, game. So, Persona 4, it, the Persona series is beloved, and it's an incredibly complex, deep, adult themed uh, yeah. RPG. And this version of it, Persona 4 on the PlayStation 2, everybody loved that game. So then the Vita comes out and they put out this version of it and then it gets this limited solid <sighs> gold edition. It's a beautiful box. It's a beautiful box. I'm never going to open it. I don't care. Hate on me all you want. I'm and never and more, it. just so you guys know, is the type of collector that normally will open a sealed game if you want to play it. But some, yeah. some you just want to keep sealed and this is but yours. Especially as, as a guy who owns a lot of Vita games. You do, a lot of uh, Vita games. You know, this is one that's kind of like a prized part of that collection. Yeah. So I think as a last check, we're looking at like 350 maybe for this game. No way. Yeah, complete or sealed. Um, so I, it's it's pretty gnarly what this is going for right now. That's cool. And you know, I never dove as much as I would have liked to into the Persona games. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily my type of game, but like you said, I have friends who this is like yes. their love. Last year, yeah. I was like, hey, did you play Breath of the Wild or are you playing God of War? Nope. And they're like, bro, I'm I'm strictly Persona. Persona. And yeah. I was like, okay, that's awesome. Do you have any sealed games? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why the way you said that. Sean is so stupid. <laughs> Do you have any sealed games? Uh, <laughs> Do you have any sealed games? <laughs> Dude, it's okay. That's I don't know why that made me laugh okay, so much. Do you have any sealed games? Uh, <laughs> I have 
here, uh, Metal Gear uh, for the Game Boy Color, complete in the box with all the manual. You got all the little inserts, inserts everything. and everything. So it's a real complete in box? It's a real, because there is, yeah. you never know. The collectors of collectors, like people like you. Mm. It's hard. I'm not that bad about it. You're not that bad, but I'm just mean you have a good collection. Oh, yeah. So yeah. tell us about this game because I never played this version, and I, from my understanding, I thought it was like a port of the NES one, but you're saying you don't think it is? I think this game is unique to the Game Boy Color. Okay. It, it certainly is uh, in many respects, but um, it has the aesthetics and, and follow of the PlayStation 1 version. Got it. I got this because my good buddy Josh, who gifted me Metal Warriors and Earthbound yes, on I remember. a recent episode of the NES Pursuit. Yeah. Before we did that, uh, maybe about six months ago, okay. was like, hey, I'm getting rid of some games. Do you want them? And um, he, he sold this to me for a great price. So I know for a lot of, when I showed this to other collectors, like in a, our Facebook group, I had people privately messaging me being like, dude, can I get that from you? I really, really want this. So I don't think it's stupid valuable. Like okay. it's not like a $600 game or something, but it's definitely as a Game Boy collector, this is one that people really seek after. And I think for me, just as a collector in general, nothing too specific, sometimes art or look or aesthetic or yeah. feel takes precedent for me, and I love the way this looks. I love the the serious tones of the Metal Gear Solid, uh -huh. but then you got the bright Game Boy <laughs> color on the side with the classic <laughs> Konami logo. This is a this is a good showpiece regardless, but what is this like going for-ish uh, right now? Like 120, I think, Okay. so something wow. in that range. Give me a second to look it up. All right, so we just did a fact check and more. What what is it? One twenty is what you said, but what's what's really happening out there? So a sold listing on eBay had it at one twenty five, um, but then there's like current listings for like three hundred and fifty dollars or more. So, yeah, there's a couple that were like in the five hundred. It's kind of all over the place. Yeah, but, but sold at one twenty four. Sold at one twenty four. So? Which again with eBay, when people try to tell you the price, every everyone should know this. If you don't already, it's common knowledge. When you look up eBay prices to price your games, you have to look at the? Sold. Yeah, because that's what it actually sells for. And then you deduct from there because the fees when you're selling locally, everybody wins. There you go, everybody wins. Here we go! No matter what you do, don't spend too much money. Yeah. Be kind to your wallet. Um, <laughs> Be kind to your wallet. Or if you're super rich, Good Have at it. <laughs> How about you? But yeah, let us know what you guys are getting. We really want to know. Tell us in the comments down below. We love hearing what's some of the more rare or valuable or just anything you picked up at all. We're down with reading that too. Yeah, it's always cool. So, all right, Morty Mort, tell them uh, they can see you at Mort underscore Guffman, right? And Instagram, and that's about it. That's it. Adios. Thanks for watching. Kelsey and the Metal Jesus Rocks channel. We'll see you guys next time. That's the way game chasing go. Have and a good I'm one. My life in gaming. And I'm 8 Bit Eric. See you later. Beat em ups and out. Keep on sleeping. <laughs> Everybody unsubscribe. <laughs> All right. Vita time. Uh, I wish I knew more about the Vita. Yeah. I tell me. Tell me. Okay. Oh, whoa. 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 Dum -dum. But boom boom boom, baby. If you want me, then all of this will go away. Fortnite. Yeah, Fortnite. We have Fortnite. We debated showing it, but we didn't. Yeah, I, I don't like Fortnite. <laughs> Did you see my Super Famicom I got? So, uh, <laughs> uh, let me confirm that so we don't sound like idiots on the. Uh... I died. You okay? He's over there. Nope. Oh. Aaron's over there. Rift's right here. Oh. You need some water? <laughs> <laughs> Getting. <laughs> so there you go. Lasers, airplanes, it's a duck blur. Might solve a mystery. Or rewrite history.